welcome back to the Lemon Abroad. Today I wanted to talk to you about a very important topic that I think you should be aware of before traveling and that is pickpocketing. Ever since I have been traveling, I've heard many stories of people being pickpocketed across the world. And unfortunately, last year, this happened to me as well. I'll tell you a bit about my story later, but first I wanted to share with you some of the tips I've learned throughout the years to protect yourself against pickpocketing. The first thing I would like to say, and it's a disclaimer that I am not a public safety expert. The information in this video is is a compilation of a lot of advice that I have received over the years from various sources as well as from the experiences of people I know. I hope that this situation never happens to you and that is why I made this video. While we can never totally 100% prevent bad things from happening to us, maybe some of these Tips could be useful to you in organizing your things in a different way or staying out of certain situations that could have caused you to be pickpocketed. So if I'm able to help someone avoid that situation, that is my intention with making this video. The next thing I would like to say is that if you have been pickpocketed, I am so sorry that this happened to you. While there are some tips that you can use to reduce the chance of being pickpocketed, you could do everything right and it might still happen to you. So try not to beat yourself up about it. It wasn't your fault that this happened. I really hope that what it won't do is defer you from traveling again, from even returning to the city where you were pickpocketed again. Because pickpocketing can happen to literally anyone, anywhere. The best thing we can do is try and be aware of our surroundings, but we can't let the chance of being pickpocketed defer us from traveling where we want to go and doing the things we want to do. The thing about pickpocketing, and I'm talking in this video strictly about the petty crime of pickpocketing, is that it's a crime of opportunity. While people are just minding their own business, enjoying walking with their friends, having a meal outside, there will be pickpocketers in the crowd who are looking for their next target, who are looking for an opportunity and they will see us before we even know they are there. It only takes one moment where you put your phone down on the table and it's gone. If you discover that you have been pickpocketed, my first advice would be to try to get to a safe, calm, secure place. If you're out in the open, try and go sit down maybe in a cafe or a bookstore, somewhere more contained where you'll feel less vulnerable. You'll need to sit down and gather yourself and process what just happened. The most important thing is to make sure that you have not been physically hurt. You could be so overwhelmed and have so much adrenaline going through your body that you could not feel anything. You will need to understand what are you going to do next. This could just be going back to your hotel or your hostel. If you were hurt, you'll need to go seek medical attention. You may want to also go to the police to file a police report. Now, depending on the situation, I think in many cases, there may not be much that can be done. You may be able to track your phone. You may have been able to recognize the people, but I think in many cases, this is just a petty crime that's very difficult to track down the perpetrators. However, you never know and it is possible that, especially if there's a police officer near you at the time of the incident, that you could recover your items. You may need to go to the police station though to file a police report for other reasons. For example, if you need to claim insurance on any of your items that were stolen or if you need to have your ID replaced, you may need a police report that says it was stolen. Going to the police could also just be a way to go to a safe space, be able to get your bearings and figure out how to move forward. As I said, pickpocketing is a crime of opportunity. So the question is, how do we make ourselves seem less opportune to a pickpocket? I think in a lot of cases, it comes down to being mindful of our things and our surroundings. But sometimes that's not enough as I'll share later on. Okay, so here are some basic tips that I've learned over the years from various sources when I was traveling. The first one I would say is to wear a type of crossbody bag. So a bag that goes over 
your, your head like this and is across your body. And this way you can also carry it in, in the front. You wouldn't carry it behind you, carry it in front of you. This way you have everything in an area of awareness. You may read on the internet that, oh, it's safer to have a bag that has a wire going through it. So that way no one could cut the wire. And if that makes you feel more comfortable, then by all means, try and find a bag like that. For me, I feel comfortable enough having just a crossbody bag. Maybe you would have a strap that was a little bit thicker, or at least you'd have all of your things in front of you so that way you could grab and hold on to them like this. Because unlike a shoulder bag, that could easily just be ripped off by someone for example, driving by on a scooter, at least with the crossbody bag, it's more secure to my body and I usually will just walk with my hand on the bag anyway, just to be comfortable and that way I feel that everything is secure. Also with a crossbody bag, I'm much less likely to set it down somewhere. So for example, if I have a shoulder bag, maybe if I sit down in a park or at a restaurant, I'll take my bag off my shoulder and set it down next to me where someone could easily grab it. However, with a crossbody bag, I usually just keep the bag on me, even if I'm sitting at a restaurant, for example. So that also is just helpful for me because there's less chance that I will absentmindedly set the bag down next to me where it could be taken. Again. If you are going to wear a backpack, I think that can also be totally fine. I don't always feel 100% comfortable wearing backpacks, especially on public transportation. So on public transportation, I'll usually just hold the backpack in front of me, you know, put it over my shoulder like this and just hold my backpack because when you're standing still in a crowded area, maybe someone could be jostling with your backpack and lift something out of it. One way you might feel more secure is putting a small lock here through the zippers or sometimes I just take the zippers and instead of having them up at the top of my backpack, I'll just zip them down more on the side or towards the bottom where it would be more difficult for someone to, without me feeling that they were doing something, open my backpack and take something out. Now, let's say that you don't have a bag, you just have maybe your phone and your wallet. I've heard advice that it's better to keep these in your front pockets. Again, so just that they're close to you, you're more aware of it. And in general, your arms are going to be in front of you. You're going to be walking with your arms behind you. So you'll be more aware that, okay, my phone is in this pocket, my wallet's in this pocket, and it would just be more difficult for someone to reach into your front pocket and take something. Of course, not impossible. You still have to be aware of your surroundings, but much more difficult than if something was hanging out of your back pocket. Now, for example, when I was pickpocketed, as I'll share later, I was wearing a trench coat and it had a side pocket. And the side pocket, it didn't have any kind of zipper. It was just a pocket where you just, you know, set the phone in. And I had my crossbody bag in front of me. Had I put my phone, you know, opened up my crossbody bag, put my phone in and closed it, I don't think I would have been pickpocketed because it would have been much more difficult for a pickpocket to come up in front of me, open my purse and take my phone out. Instead, my phone was just sitting in a side pocket and the person was able to just reach in and grab it. It was very much an invasion of my personal space. I had not thought that someone would be so bold as to reach into my pocket like that, but it just goes to show you that they are. So you do have to be really super aware of your surroundings and where you're putting your things on your body. Now, I also know many people when they travel, they'll use a hidden item, obviously not this bold, maybe more of a beige color, but something like this that maybe they could wear around their neck and then they could put under their shirt or I don't know, inside their belt. Maybe it's easier, especially when you have more layers going on. And again, if you feel more comfortable doing that, then that is the way to go. Just make sure it doesn't trick you into having a false sense of security though. So for example, even if you are putting your money or your passport in this little pouch that is going to be tucked into your t-shirt, yes, it would be very difficult for someone to just come and grab it. It does not mean that you should feel comfortable, for example, when you're paying at an outdoor restaurant to pull it out and count all your money and then tuck it back in because this could actually set you up to be more vulnerable to an even more violent crime such as someone mugging you or using a weapon to try and convince you to hand over this little pouch of money. So either way, you still need to be very attentive to your actions and your surroundings. 
Okay, so now let's talk about being mindful of our things and our surroundings. Like I said, this is really our best defense against seeming opportune to pickpockets. One thing is when you're walking down the street, and for example, if you have an over-the-shoulder bag, walk with your bag towards, for example, the wall. Don't walk with your bag towards the street where someone could really just go by on a scooter and rip your bag off and potentially hurt you in the process as well. So it's best to walk next to a wall, for example, where no one can come in between you and your things. As you'll hear in my story, I actually was walking next to a wall. So like I said, we can try to do the best we can, but pickpockets will still try and take our things even if we follow all these tricks. It doesn't mean that we don't have to be aware of our surroundings. We still have to keep an eye on things going on, who's in front of us, who's behind us. One thing is if you're walking with earbuds, it really is a detriment to your sense of healing hearing and you become less aware of what's going on around you of someone who could be approaching you for example another thing is if you are waiting for the bus and you have your phone you're checking instagram you're listening to music don't stand with your phone out towards the street where someone could just grab your phone right out of your hand so sometimes we might not think about these things because maybe we live in an area where pickpocketing or this type of stealing isn't very common but we have to be aware that not everywhere is the same context as home and we have to prepare ourselves for the unexpected. Also, just in general, I wouldn't suggest going around with too many things that you don't need. I always suggest to people, for example, to pack light. That way when you are arriving or you're going from destination to destination, you're not carrying around so many things that one, you could lose track of more easily because you have too many things to pay attention to. And another is that you're not going to be really present in the moment. You're going to be distracted by all these things and that could make you more vulnerable to being pickpocketed or to having some of your belongings stolen. Also, if you were to be pickpocketed or to lose something on vacation, you wouldn't want it to be something that was important or had a lot of sentimental value. You can lock the things that you don't want to take with you into the city, into the street, in your hotel safe or your hostel locker, but even better, you can just leave these things at home. The last thing you want to be doing on vacation is worrying about your things. I would also say maybe not bring your nicest, most expensive things for your vacation. Again, we're talking about making ourselves seem less opportune to pickpockets. So if you're wearing a lot of really obviously expensive things, this would potentially make you a more attractive target. So maybe just consider not wearing the most expensive things you have, trying to blend in a little bit and lay low and not attract a lot of attention to yourself. You wouldn't want to bring things on vacation anyway that you wouldn't want to potentially lose or have stolen. This is also a good reminder to make sure that you are regularly backing up your phone. So that way, if in case it is stolen, you don't lose all of your photos and data on your phone as well. For documents, it's good to have copies of your ID and passport, either a paper copy or in your email, but just make sure that you would be able to access this email remotely if your phone was stolen, for example. You might want to have your flight reservations, hotel reservations, things like this in one safe place. Know the information about your bank and credit cards in case you need to call and cancel them if your wallet was stolen. There are a few more tips that I think we wouldn't know what to expect if we don't live in areas where pickpocketing is common. For example, before I traveled, I wouldn't have thought twice about setting my phone down on a table at an outdoor restaurant. Now I would never do that and even if I did, the second I realized it, I would grab for my phone like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I set my phone down there. And I do this everywhere, even back home where it's highly unlikely that someone in my small town would come and grab my phone off the table. So I think that these are just good habits, good personal safety habits to pick up in general. Okay, so like I mentioned, when you're outside, when you're in a park, at a restaurant, at a cafe, never set your phone down on the table. Just keep it in your hands, keep it in your lap. And the same goes for your bag. Don't put it over the back of your chair. Don't put it on the ground. Just 
Keep it in your lap. Keep it right next to you on the chair you're sitting on. Don't leave it in a space where someone could grab it or someone could enter it without your knowledge. So as I've mentioned, being aware of your surroundings is super important. However, we are always going to be at a disadvantage to a pickpocketer. They know where they are. They know what they're doing. They're blending right in. We are the ones who are probably in a new city where we've never been before. We are just minding our business and we can't be always looking 360 degrees around us. This is just a case of doing your best and finding a balance between being aware of what's going on around you and also not letting it totally consume your mind and ruin your vacation. So you might be thinking, what should I do if I'm being pickpocketed? There are different schools of thought on this. Pickpockets can work alone, but they can also work in teams, which is what happened to me. We can't know if there is someone else working with them who could potentially try to hurt us if we were drawing attention to them. I do feel that in many cases, you don't know that your phone or your wallet or your purse is gone before it's already too late. However, there are some times, like in my case, where you do realize what's going on in the moment. I feel like while you can try to imagine what you would do if you were in that situation, it's really something that you're not going to know how you'll react until it actually happens. Of course, I hope it doesn't actually happen, but you'll have to be in that situation to know what to do. It's going to depend on where you are. Are there a lot of people around you? Are you with someone you know? Did someone snatch your bag and then run with it? Or are they trying to literally take it out of your hands where you're holding on to your purse, for example, and someone is trying to take it from you? There are many different ways that this can happen and likely it's just going to be an instinctual response. I really want to just stay on the topic of pickpocketing, but in general, there are some personal safety safety tips that we can also utilize just to keep us safe when we're traveling abroad. So, you know, try not to walk in isolated areas, especially at night. If you need to, call a taxi or just stick to well-lit, crowded areas. Have your route mapped out ahead of time so that you know where you're going and you aren't just staring at your phone and looking lost. Go into a restaurant or a shop if you need directions. So going back to pickpocketing though, as I mentioned before, I'm not a safety expert. I'm not an expert in self-defense. So I can't advise you on what to do in that situation. You know, here I'm talking about pickpocketing specifically, which it's usually a petty crime and it's usually a crime of opportunity, but you never know when someone may become violent or have a weapon. But if you're in a dangerous situation, you need to think about what is really important and that is your life. For example, as I will share with you in a little bit, I figured out pretty quickly what was going on when I was pickpocketed. And so this person was still in my sight and without even thinking, I started yelling and chasing after him. I really don't know if that was the smart move or not because there was a second person involved and it very well could have ended up badly. That person could have tried to hurt me in order to try and stop me drawing attention to them. After the incident was over, actually the first thing I did was check myself to make sure I hadn't been hurt because I had so much adrenaline going through my body. I couldn't feel anything. Fortunately, in this situation, nothing did happen to me, but I did feel very lucky for that. Pickpocketing can happen to you if you're alone or even if you're in a group. If you pick up on energy that someone around you is kind of being weird or they're walking too close to you, then they might be about to try to pickpocket you. For example, a few months ago, I was walking with two of my guy friends and we were in kind of an isolated area. And so someone started walking directly towards Towards us. So that of course is strange because we were in a really open area so there was no need to walk close to us and he kind of tried to like push in between us and walk in between us and immediately we all picked up on what was going on and you know fortunately none of us had anything in our hands that he could have easily grabbed but it was still a really unnerving situation and it just reminded me that you always need to try and be aware of what's going on and just try and keep your things close to you in a bag or or in a pocket where they wouldn't be easily accessible to someone. Okay, so now I'll share with you a bit about what happened to me, my story of being pickpocketed. 
I really could not have imagined that this situation was going to happen to me. I consider myself very mindful, very attentive of my things, and very aware of my surroundings. The whole thing came really out of nowhere. I was in Barcelona, and it was about a year ago, in February, March, not even really the high tourist season. And it was my third time visiting the city, so I felt pretty comfortable being there. Where I was, it wasn't a super crowded area. It wasn't by any famous, you know, statue or anything that people would be surrounding taking pictures. It was just a pretty normal shopping area of the city. There were a good number of people just out and about and it was the middle of the day. I knew exactly where I was going. I was just going down one street from a coffee shop to a bookstore. If you look it up, the whole thing takes less than one minute. And, you know, I wasn't looking for directions. I wasn't confused about where I was going. I was really just walking from one place to another down one street, easy. Now, since I had arrived in Barcelona, several locals had already told me to be mindful of my things, to not leave things unattended. So I think already subconsciously, I was more hyper aware than perhaps I usually am. And I think that's also one of the reasons why I was able to figure out what was going on faster than perhaps I would have otherwise. So I was pickpocketed basically after I was leaving this coffee shop. But now that I look back on it, it's very likely that the pickpocketers had maybe been watching me for a few minutes before I even went into the coffee shop and they were waiting for me to come out. I had probably been using my phone. I love to take pictures, for example, and I had a brand new iPhone at the time and that is what they were after. So I had a few shopping bags in my hand and I had my crossbody bag. After I left the coffee shop, I remember I remember taking a photo of some street art and then I slipped my phone into my coat pocket. I was walking alongside a wall and as I mentioned I was going into kind of a piazza where there were lots of people but in the moment I was pickpocketed there wasn't many people right next to me. And like I said, my phone was just kind of like resting in my pocket. It wasn't very deep and there wasn't any kind of zipper. So it was just sitting there, but it was on the front side of my body. So as I mentioned, I was walking alongside a wall and all of a sudden it felt like I had hit something with my hip. I thought that was really strange because I hadn't remembered seeing anything like an obstacle, like a sidewalk barrier or something like that. So I very quickly turned around toward the wall. I just saw a man lying on the ground next to a bicycle. Because I've heard many stories like this of people getting pickpocketed, and because I was aware that this city, this neighborhood actually had a problem with pickpockets, I think I just realized that something wasn't right. So I turned around the other way towards the entrance to the piazza, and there was another man on a bicycle right next to me. I just said, hey, and he looked at me and he looked pretty freaked out and he started pedaling away. And that's when I felt for my pockets and my phone wasn't there. And I knew immediately what had happened, which is that the man on the bicycle had taken my phone out of my pocket and handed it to this guy on the bicycle. And then he, you know, fell over. So the idea is that I turn around, I see this man on the ground. Oh no, he's fallen. He needs help. I'll try and help him. And then before I realize, you know, he says, oh no, I'm okay. He gets up, he goes away. I realize my phone is gone and both of them are gone and there's nothing I can do. So instead, I realized that this other man had my phone. I was like 98% sure that this man had just taken my phone. And so I just started chasing after him. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I've never screamed so loudly before. I was screaming, hey, I was screaming thief. I was screaming, you have my phone. I was screaming, he stole my phone. This guy, he stole my phone. And all of these people were just looking at me and looking at him and I wasn't asking that anyone intervene at the expense of their own personal safety, but he couldn't really go that fast because he was in this crowd of people. I, I was just like, will someone just push him off this bicycle? Like, just tip him over so that way I can get my phone back. But no one did. So it was just me chasing him. And by this point, he was getting farther away from me and he was about to cross over a really crowded street and just be gone. I don't know what came over him at this point. I have no idea, but before crossing the street, he 
stopped his bicycle. He raised his hands and turned around and in his one hand, he had my phone. He looked at me and set my phone on the ground and sped away. I couldn't believe it. So I ran over to this area. I got my phone off the ground. I was totally in shock. Some people came over to me to try and see if I was okay, to see what had happened. My first thought was to make sure that I was okay. As I mentioned before, I just had so much adrenaline in my body at that point. I was so overwhelmed and I really could not feel anything. I also made sure I had my purse, my wallet, all my other things because then for a moment I thought maybe they took my phone to distract me and they took something else and that's why they gave me my phone. It was all very confusing and overwhelming. One really kind woman said, where are you trying to go? And I said, I was trying to go to this bookstore right here, right behind me. And she said, oh, me too. Let's go together. So we went inside. I was just walking around and she was walking around a little bit too. And after a while, she came up to me and said, do you want to have a coffee or a tea? And so we went into this garden that the bookstore had. They had a little coffee shop there and we just had some tea and coffee and it was so nice. By that point, I was starting to feel calm again. We talked about our travels and what we enjoyed doing in Barcelona and she gave me a lot of good advice. She actually told me that she herself had once been pickpocketed on the Barcelona Metro. I was so surprised when she told me that because she seemed to know so much about Barcelona and she seemed so sure of herself and and strong but it just proves that it can happen to anyone no matter if you're visiting a city or if you've lived there for many years when I told her what had happened she told me oh no you should always keep your phone and your wallet in this front body bag you shouldn't keep it in your hand because someone could just grab it the thing is we can't know if the person standing next to us on the bus is going to try and pickpocket us we can't know when we're walking into a crowded place if there's a pickpocket there looking for someone to steal from we are the ones who always have to try and be aware of our surroundings as much as we can because pickpocketing can happen to anyone I definitely think that if I hadn't been already aware of some of these kind of stunts and tricks that pickpocketers use, and if I hadn't had the awareness that the area I was in is known for having pickpockets, that I would not have put two and two together as quickly as I did. I would have perhaps asked the man, are you okay? And stopped to help him thinking that he needed help but instead something instinctual in me told me that something is not right. I had to just listen to my gut and follow this other man. Very soon after this trip to Barcelona, I was visiting Napoli, which is a city that I feel comfortable in and I know pretty well. I was waiting for the bus. I had just arrived from the airport to the main train station and I noticed there was another girl waiting with me as well. She got on the first bus that came, but I was waiting for a different line. And within about 20 minutes, she was back at the bus stop and she was crying and she was looking for her phone. My heart just sank because I knew immediately what had happened. All of those feelings from the last week just came right back to me. I was already feeling a little bit vulnerable because it's the case in many cities that the main train station area is going to be a vulnerable place for tourists because tourists are arriving there. They have all their bags. They don't know where they are. They're looking for their bus, their train, and they're not paying attention to their own surroundings. But this is how I learned of a different tactic that pickpocketers sometimes use. So for example, you get on a bus or you get on a train and then a pickpocketer could take your phone just as the doors are closing they'll run off and before you realize that your phone is gone the pickpocketer is already gone the bus has driven away as we were there talking with some people someone told me that yes this unfortunately is very common you know especially coming from the main train station because there are many tourists and like I said, when you're just arriving to a city, I feel that you're in a more vulnerable position because you're confused, you're trying to get to your hotel, and you just aren't maybe looking around at all your things. So this is just another reminder to be very attentive, especially when waiting for public transportation or on public transportation. This girl in particular, she was so upset 
of course, not just for losing her phone, but for all of the information that was in it, how to get back to her hostel, her flight information, all of these other things that she really needed. And my heart just really went out to her. But this is another reminder that you should have a way to access all of your information remotely because not even if you have your phone pickpocketed, but it could be damaged, you could forget it somewhere. We need to know how to have access to these things. Losing your phone and being pickpocketed, it's already very traumatic. So the better prepared you can be in the event that this situation would happen, the better it will be for you if you do in fact have to recover from it. This is why it's so important to make sure you have all the information on your phone backed up and have a way to have access to your information as well. This event was such a wake up call for me because I was already pretty shaken up from the week before. And while I was already being cautious and holding my things close to me, I hadn't even thought about this type of grab and go, taking things off public transportation. And I don't know if I would have been really aware of the situation if I had gotten on my own bus first without having seen what had happened to this other person. So after that, I was definitely more attentive of my things and tried not to be distracted, not listening to music, for example, and just trying to pay attention to where I was and where I was going. Now, I will say that there are pickpockets and thieves all over the world. There are probably pickpockets and thieves wherever you're from as well, even if you've never encountered them. Certainly, some cities and neighborhoods have a higher prevalence of this kind of activity than others. Usually, these are big cities with significant tourist populations specifically in areas with lots of tourists or, for example, near the train stations, near the bus stations where the tourists are usually arriving and they are still confused and don't really know where they're going and are therefore distracted and not paying attention to their surroundings. Before this incident, for example, I had never worried about being pickpocketed in Palermo. I had no idea if there were pickpockets here or not. However, last summer I was traveling around Sicily and I met a girl who was going to be coming to Palermo. So I gave her some recommendations because unfortunately I wasn't going to be back in the city when she arrived. Now a few weeks later I texted her to see how her trip had been and she told me she loved it but unfortunately she was pickpocketed and she was pickpocketed in a street that I go to all the time and that I've never thought twice about being pickpocketed before. I felt horrible because I never could have imagined that something would happen like that in Palermo, much less in this area. But it's important to keep in mind that someone can pickpocket you anywhere. So like I said, these tips may be for when you're going on vacation, but you'll definitely start to just apply them naturally wherever you go, even when you're at home. Now, this experience happened to me almost one year ago, and honestly, it has still stayed with me. I'll be out enjoying myself and then all of a sudden panic. Where, where's my phone? Where's my phone? And if I can't find it right away, I start getting really nervous and then I'll find it somewhere in my purse and I'll say, oh, okay, I think I carry myself differently. I definitely have more crossbody bags than I did a year ago, but I'm trying to find a balance because the last thing that I want this experience to do is deter me from traveling again, especially deter me from, for example, traveling again to Barcelona, which is a city that I love visiting. I think it's a balance between being more cautious, which I think now I naturally am just more cautious, and not letting it totally take over your life. So I'm going to end this video here. These were just a few tips that I had heard of over the years and that I've put into practice in my own life, not only when I'm traveling, but when I'm anywhere. I hope that some of them have been useful to you and I hope that you will never have the experience of being picked Pocketed. If you have been pickpocketed like me, then first, I hope that you are okay. Go easy on yourself and remember that this is not your fault. I hope that it won't deter you from continuing to go out and explore the world because there are so many beautiful places and so many kind people out there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Ciao!